let's see what the results of those poll questions that came in are. Can we get some of the results? Okay. So it looks like formulation development and optimization is the biggest challenge with 25%. Um, we've got 18 in in vitro potency and efficacy assays. There your, there's your analytics right there for you. Um, and then you've got your process dev um, and analytical assessment coming in um, in third place. Any gut reactions to that? Any other, any thoughts, anything surprise you here? Perhaps in no terms of, of about what? regulatory hurdles. <laughs> <laughs> At the last conference I went to, that's not the case. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you that. <laughs> Is that something you're you're concerned <laughs> about, Alok? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah, regulatory is always the key, right? Because uh, this is an evolving field, everyone should remember. There are not a lot of set guidelines, right? It's still evolving. Yeah. So there's yeah. always a, a question that un unless the agency kind of chimes in, it's it's an outstanding question, right? You don't know how, what the response will be. So, mm -hmm. so I would say, Absolutely. yeah, it's still, because there's not a lot of precedence, remember, right? There's only two or three products out there, so. Yeah. Russell, what about you? Any gut reactions here? So, so my gut reaction is is the formulation development optimization. That's a, that's a product of maybe um, a couple of things, right? One is is accessing mm -hmm. lipids that people can use in products, and that that's a real challenge, mm -hmm. right? Um, yep. uh, really, um, you know, if you're a startup and, and just getting the ball rolling, you know, your options that, that, that are really open because of IP purposes are, are, are mm -hmm. kind of limited, and, and your investors often put pressure on you to solve that because you really don't have a product without without a strategy to kind of overcome that. Um, that that's kind of what I'm guessing at, but but I don't I don't really I mean again mm -hmm. like these are just kind of general comments. I think mm -hmm. regulatory and safety are the uh, I would agree with the low key regulatory, I mean it's just new. The, the agency mm -hmm. and, and global regulatory agencies are are still evolving their position and, and probably more more directly for gene therapy because the precedent is still emerging, right? Um, for vaccines, at least you have two products that become benchmarks for really anything else that follows, right? So so um, it's a little bit more mature, but still, that's only two products that were really improved yeah. in unique circumstances. So so I think I think, but but then safety is the, the one that I, I guess I'm really surprised isn't on the list because. Um, because it's 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 not straightforward. Uh, it's it's uh, I think uh, there there's really very few publications that give you very clear you know guidelines of what a safe lipid nanoparticle is and and actually how things will translate from your animal models to clinical um, evaluation. Because you know and, and the the one thing that that from, from my experience and, and everybody that I've talked to has been universally true is that the, the observations of safety in animal models has never represented what's happened in clinic. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's been very surprising um, for, for most of us as we go through this to see how, how different those models can be. So yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully that helps. Yeah, well, we actually have a question here too from the audience. This is why, LN, why is LNP transferability from animal to human not that predictable? Uh, with, I think they mean with efficacy. I don't know if you guys have any sense on why that <laughs> would be the case. <laughs> if you did, you might be able to solve the problem. Yeah. I can chime in sense? a little bit on that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's still uh, unsolved, I would say, right? Uh, especially in oncology, like there's no way of uh, knowing, you know, what, pro what, I mean, you can treat all mice tumors you want, right? But it still doesn't like maybe 0.1% of the product translates to an actual product, right? In in, in human uh, clinical trials. But uh, when it comes to liver delivery, I think the field, you know, a bunch of this work was done by Alnylam and Novartis and all these companies that got involved, right? People learned pretty early on that uh, the toxin mouse models, right? Doesn't translate uh, to, for example, non-human primates is reflective of human talks uh, it, when it comes to LNPs, right? It's pretty close, but you can't do NHP studies all day long, right? So, well, and mouse doesn't tell you what will happen in an NHP, so where do you go? And so there's a happy media, you know, people figure out that RAT is kind of predictive, right? And mm -hmm. then people went to RAT models. So it, again, it will, it, this is again, I'm, I'm talking liver delivery and liver clear, and then I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm assuming 
a lot has to do with how the lipids are cleared in mouse versus rat and rat more uh, reflects uh, how it's cleared in a monkey versus a mouse right so uh, so and rat is a happy medium you can do rat studies uh, more frequently mm -hmm. than an NH. Uh, but I mean, I'm dealing with oncology right now, and right, it's very hard. It's it's still an open mm -hmm. question, right? How do you predict a human tumor, and how, which, for example, you don't have yeah. uh, uh, tumor models in a monkey, right? I mean, it's I'm assuming it's not ethical, right? So I, there's some examples, right? These the is these are still open challenges. Someone can solve it, I guess. Were they waiting gold overnight? I guess. <laughs> If you want to become it's, famous, it, solve that problem. It's a, it's a tough ahead, question. Russell. You know, it's a tough question. Like these, these kind of questions really are, are big, you know, challenges. Mm. Um, I think, but, but also, uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, the famous George Fox uh, quote, right? Um, so so uh, all, all models lie, but some are useful. Right, like uh, you know, I mean, animal models are, are the same as well, right? I mean, he was talking about statistically modeling things, right? But but the reality is, your animal model is is an approximation of of a of a you know an illness typically, right? And and it's it's not a natural state of that of that animal. So so um, yeah, and so you have just key limitations. And then the other part is, um, I mean, this is early days. Uh, so for a vaccine, innate responses are still being figured out and also you know your animals they, they, so so for example when, when we get vaccinated right we have a sore arm and we let everybody know that we have a sore arm right <laughs> or or if we're feeling like we have the flu we let everybody know and and uh and and the you know your rats and your your your, your rodents really they, they don't talk right they don't talk <laughs> and even you know they have more generalized kind of mechanisms to to overcome a fever, yeah. right? So, so you may not even see temperatures or, or, or other habitual observations that, that just aren't changed in, in the course of the study. And so there, there, there just needs to be, I think, better biomarkers for the, the, the real underlying mechanisms of, of, of either, you know, reactogenicity in the case for vaccines or, or generalized toxicity, toxicity for, for therapeutics. And, and they just, right now, they just don't exist. I mean, it's, it's such a different paradigm than, than what the small molecule and, and protein biologics are, are really focused on. Um, that, that, you know, the, 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 you know the, the industry at large has to mature in those areas. So, um, yeah, so, so I think, I think there's, there's mm -hmm. a lot of talking points there, a very deep question um, that, that's really, I think, just barely beginning to, to really open up in a way that, that we can make a lot of sense of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I was unfortunately thinking about Ratatouille as you were talking, right? We need to do science in a Pixar movie so that they can tell us, right, how they feel. Could be a very helpful uh, evolution in science, right?